Frederica Wilson, you have no honor. I am stunned, just stunned by your shameless, overtly political exploitation of one of our men in uniform's death to push your depraved anti-Trump agenda and feed your irrational hatred for the man in the Oval Office. Stop wasting our time and go do your job. I was supposed to take a today off, but I had to come in to tell this woman what's up because she's starting to tick me off. Everything you have done this week exposes you for the fraud, for the liar, and for the embarrassment to Congress that you are. And if your constituents don't vote your ass out of office when you're up for re-election, then they're an embarrassment to the state of Florida too. Here's a taste of the kind of loathing she's been spewing on the networks ever since the story broke. He's cold-hearted and he feels no pity or sympathy for anyone. There she is talking about Trump's call to Myesha Johnson, whose husband, Sergeant LaDavid T. Johnson, was killed in Niger. Wilson says the president was not sensitive enough to the family because the president told the widow, quote, he knew what he was getting into. And what Trump meant to say there was that Johnson knew what he was doing. He was doing exactly what he wanted to be doing, proudly serving the country when he was killed. And what Trump said is what General Kelly, a gold star father whose son was killed by a landmine while leading a combat patrol in Afghanistan, advised him to say after Trump asked for guidance on what he could do to alleviate the heavy burden placed on these grieving families. Now, my question is, what the hell was she doing on the call in the first place? I mean, can someone please explain that to me? Why is a member of Congress listening in on the intimate call between the president and a woman who's just lost her husband? And here's what really put me over. After General Kelly came out and talked about his deceased son in one of the most somber, sincere, and powerful press conferences I've seen, I, I could not believe that this clown had the audacity to come along with her ridiculous pimp hat, it looks like she wanted at a carnival, and told Politico that John Kelly's just trying to keep his job. This is a quote, he will say anything. <laughs> Did you watch the press conference, Congresswoman? I was there in person and I can tell anyone, anyone who has a doubt that this is not a man who's willing to just say anything. You're the one who's willing to say anything, Congresswoman, because Town Hall looked into your voting record and they found that your voting record is atrocious when it comes to helping vets. You voted against bills to ensure funding for veteran benefits, including payments to widows of fallen soldiers. So let's be real, Congresswoman, you're not in this for the veterans. You are a spineless hypocrite looking for a way to attack this president. It's pathetic. Instead of capitalizing on Mrs. Johnson's tragedy, how about you put your money where your mouth is and back legislation that will help our veterans? Now, if you didn't watch General Kelly's press conference yesterday, go to the White House website, find it, watch the whole thing from beginning to end. I promise you, you will want to hear what this man has to say. And you, I think you'll appreciate the fact that we have a man like uh, Kelly that is serving at the highest levels of government. Here's a taste of the press conference of Kelly schooling the media on what happened during the moments leading up to the phone call and the phone call itself that the Congresswoman is saying was so insensitive. So he called four people the other day and expressed his condolences in the best way that he could. And he said to me, what do I say? Uh, I said to him, sir, there's nothing you can do to lighten the burden on these families. But let me tell you what I tell them. And what, let me tell you what my best friend, Joe Dunford, told me, because he was my casualty officer. He said, Kel, um, he was doing exactly what he wanted to do when he was killed. He knew what he was getting into by joining the, that 1%. He knew what the possibilities were, because we're at war. And when he died, in the four cases we're talking about, Niger, my son's case in Afghanistan, when he died, he was surrounded by the best men on this earth, his friends. That's what the president tried to say to, a fam to four families the other day. I was stunned when I came to work yesterday morning and brokenhearted at what I saw a member of Congress doing. A member of Congress who listened in on a phone call from the President of the United States to a young wife and in his way tried to express that opinion that he's a brave man, a fallen hero. He knew what he was getting himself into because he enlisted. There's no reason to enlist. He enlisted. And he was where he wanted to be, exactly where he wanted to be with exactly the people he wanted to be with when his life was taken.
That was the message. That was the message that was transmitted. And when I listened to this woman and what she was saying and what she was doing on TV, the only thing I could do to collect my thoughts was to go and walk among the finest men and women on this earth. And you can always find them because they're in Arlington National Cemetery. I went over there for an hour and a half, walked among the stones, some of whom I put there because they were doing what I told them to do when they were killed. I know it's a long clip, but I wanted you to see the full thing because the media is going to try to skew this, and I just wanted you to get the context. Now, at the end of the press conference, the general originally asked to only take questions from reporters who were a Gold Star parent or a Gold Star sibling, but not a single person in the press, uh, including myself, was a member of a uh, Gold Star family, so he had to open it up to people who knew Gold Star families. But the point here is, that only 1% of our population serves in the military. So most people don't have firsthand experience needed to speak on that issue. So that's why we should all listen to a man who has the authority and who knows what he's talking about when it comes to this. But it also just shows you the disconnect between the media and the families of those who fight for our freedom that the people in the White House press corps didn't have the humility, they, they could not even just sit back and say, all right, I'm not the expert here, so let me listen to someone who is. Instead, the minute General Kelly opened it up to the people who know a gold star, they jumped on him with gotcha political questions. So, Congressman, if you try to take General Kelly on this, you will lose and you already have lost. No one takes you seriously. How can you take her seriously with those hats? But this is serious because what you're doing is a debasement of the men and women who put on our uniform and preserve our freedom so you can go on air and spew that ridiculous crap that you do. This morning, she responded to General Kelly's reaction to her accusations. Empty barrels make the most noise. And he was using that he was likening that to you. Basically, that you're... you're I think that's a, that's a racist term, too. I, I'm thinking about that when uh, we looked it up in the dictionary because I had never heard of an empty barrel. And I don't like uh, to be uh, dragged into something like that. <laughs> okay, everything about that's ridiculous. Racist? How in the world is it racist? Also, for someone who doesn't like to be dragged into things, you did a pretty damn good job of dragging yourself into a story that had nothing to do with you. You made a story out of a phone call you should have never been on in the first place. You made a story about a fallen hero about you. And lastly, <laughs> you had to look up Empty Barrel in the dictionary? What kind of imbeciles do we have running our country? She's never heard of an empty barrel? All right, let me explain this to you real simple, lady. All that means is you have nothing in your gun. You brought nothing to the fight. You're just making a lot of noise, but you don't have anything substantive. You're a big hat with no cattle. You have no facts. You have nothing. All you have is your 15 minutes of fame because right now, I hope you are enjoying it. All the people who you're talking to, they are not listening to you because you have something. They're not listening because you have something profound to say. They're not listening to you because you have something insightful to say. People are listening to you because people like a good circus. That's why you're getting phone calls from the bookers at all the TV networks. And last night I asked myself, and I think I actually tweeted, why are we giving this woman any more airtime? She's a clown. But when your moment of fame is up, Congresswoman, when everyone's done talking about you this week, you will have no reputation to rest on. You will have no legacy because you have no dignity, you have no honor, and unlike General Kelly, you have no clue what you're talking about when it comes to this. Thanks, guys, for watching. This was a Facebook Live edition of the White House Brief. We hope to see you guys next time.